RV to Freedom Live. Tonight, I am joined by Lori and Jace, and you can learn more about them at wonderwassy.com, right? Right. And wonderwassy on Instagram. Brandon is over here. He is manning the comments and everything, so you might hear him pop up every so often. And if you have any questions, feel free to type it in there, and we'll get to those, and he'll be joining us then you might hear a disembodied voice but he is over here <laughs> so tonight these are our good friends Lori and Jace and I'm so glad to see you guys again you too. Yeah. <laughs> and we wanted to talk a little bit with you because they have a kind of unique situation I think there's there are people doing this but most of the time when you hear about RVers that work and travel in their RV they're often doing something online or remote from their RV but they're in actual physical locations doing work. And so we're going to talk a little bit about how they arrange that and how you guys work that out in your travel style because it's, it's changed. It's a little different than mm -hmm. the rest of us. And, um, and they've even done it in a trek camper too. <laughs> so let's, let's just start in with some of the more basic stuff here. And how long have you guys been full time? We have been full time a little over three years. All right. Pretty good amount of time there. Yes. <laughs> Just a little less than us. So we're right on the same schedule. And what made you guys want to hit the road? Just kind of accomplished everything that we wanted to accomplish living in Minneapolis. And uh, we've always loved traveling. And this was a great way to take her home with you. So <laughs> absolutely is a great way to take her home with you. <laughs> I have it all the time. And so I just mentioned a truck camper, but that's not really your primary no, home. Definitely not. <laughs> yeah. So what do you guys travel in? We have a 30 foot Airstream. Yeah. And it's a pretty nice Airstream, guys. <laughs> I like have it. seen it. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. And you guys have had that for the whole time. And you right. looked at other things, too. Yep. It's not like you were dead set on Airstream, right? Yes. We looked at everything. We went to RV shows. Um, my family has um, RVs, and we've been camping. And so... Finally settled on an airstream when the right one came along. That's great. That's great. And and so this is kind of gets into some of the stuff you do. You guys have a typical travel style and like do you like to go to parks or boondocking? And then how long do you stay? <laughs> Which <laughs> a lot of times the travel is around national parks. Mm -hmm. We really enjoy national parks and camping in the national parks. <laughs> Yeah, um, meeting up with friends, divert over, you know, right. meet up for a good hike or a couple of hikes and somewhere that uh, sounds really neat or someone's recommended highly on Campendium, different places. Yeah. So. And so you guys do that for mo like most of the year you're mm -hmm. camping inside the National Park campgrounds, mm -hmm. which don't always have hookups. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're doing a lot of dry camping yeah. within the National Parks, right? right. And then... You do a lot of boondocking there too. Yes. So we were just talking today and I figure um, aside from what we call our work season, which we can talk about as well, um, we travel for about eight months and within that eight months, we probably stay in a full hookup spot probably five times just to catch up on cleaning. Really? That's yeah. it? I didn't <laughs> realize that. <laughs> unless, it's unless it's a special national park where we get hookups. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you can have them there, why not? Right. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'd say national parks are the second choice, and boondocking yep. by far is the first choice. But otherwise, we just we'd rather be in the woods than have neighbors. <laughs> don't, <laughs> yeah. don't want that to sound bad, but that's part of you know what this was all about for us is getting out more. Right. We've always loved hiking, you know, backcountry camping, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense to me. You you don't always have neighbors, and you do get to choose your neighbors sometimes. Yes. You guys are camped with friends. Right. Yes. Which we do and, a lot, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to talk about earning income, too, in this travel style. So you said you're, when you're not work, the not work season, what yes. is your refrigerator at? The not work season, eight months. But the other time, what, what are you doing during your work season? We are in one place. Um in the three years that we've traveled, our first year was in Key West. Then the last two years have been in Yuma. Um, and this year's a little different. We're in, um, in the winter, so we're <laughs> in a house this year with an Airstream and storage. But um, So I'm an occupational therapist, so I can get travel contracts. And um, so I take a contract where the snowbirds go. <laughs> right. They, there's always an 
uh, increased need and it pays very well. And that helps fund our travel for the rest of the year. I think that's a, a kind of a great idea mm-hmm. because it really frees you up for the rest of the year, mm-hmm. right? You're not, yep. you can take another contract right. if you want. Yep. That's always available. Yeah. So. But then you don't have to. And so you're more free. They're like, we're, we're always tethered to the internet. Mm-hmm. And you guys don't always yeah. have to worry about that <laughs> yes. for the rest of the year. And yes. it's like, oh, that's kind of nice. And, and really, I mean, Key West, <laughs> not, not a bad bad. place, right? To no. spend the winter. <laughs> so right. it's not like the snowboard season's a horrible place. So Yuma's not as exciting as Key no. West. But well, friends always not come quite, through. Yeah, yes. well, I know <laughs> we've been through. I know other friends have been through when yeah. they're down there. And you have Mexico right yeah. there that you can yes. go yeah. have fun. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you can have fun <laughs> anywhere. Like, that's you right. Know, or you can have a miserable time in the best place ever. So. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's what you make of it, right? Absolutely. Yes. And you're in the desert and it's warm. Mm-hmm. And so it's yeah. it's nice then too. Yeah. And we love and this area. So. Exactly. You like the area. And, you know, in the winter, it seems like almost all full-time RVers move, most of them, I'll say, because <laughs> you guys aren't this year. But <laughs> and there's always some people who like to be in the snow, but most of them move south. Mm-hmm. So even though we may not all be in Yuma for four months, everybody is, unless you're in Florida, they're, if you're in the Southwest desert, you're passing through. Mm-hmm. So even you guys take little trips, which I know you've done too, yes. weekend trips or maybe yep. a week long or something. Yep. Anytime off work, we'd try to try to get away to San Diego or to right. yeah, yeah. just even that going too. 20 Yuma. miles into the desert. Yeah. To hang out with friends. So. Yeah. Towards Tucson, Joshua Tree National yeah. Park, San Diego. Yeah. Try some microbrews <laughs> if friends are over there. Anza Borrego State right. Park, Salton Sea. So, so all that stuff's nearby. And yes. I mean, San Diego is what, a few yeah, hours? Yeah, just like two and a half two. hours. Two and a half hours, yeah. yeah. So not bad. Yeah. And if you want to get an ocean fix, yep. you can go out there. <laughs> yeah. And it's not a bad way to go. No, not at all. <laughs> so did you actually get into occupational therapy with that in mind that you could do that? Um, we always knew that we wanted to travel in some capacity. It was a sailboat, his idea right. at first, but um, with uh, at the time we had two dogs and with being an occupational therapist, that wouldn't have worked as well. Although, you know, going a back to, right, work as well. right. but knowing that I would um, be an occupational therapist and knowing I could get medical contracts was definitely part of the reason that I went back to school and I love it too. So well, that's good. That's good. Cause yeah, I wouldn't be, yeah. be as fun if you didn't love it too. Yes. Yeah. So, um, you mentioned the sailboat and mm-hmm. I know you guys have done a sailing trip. Is that <laughs> like part of it? Just kind of getting that sail time in still that different uh, way to travel. That. <laughs> yeah. For right now it's, you know, a, a, a trip. With, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, the last time we did it was with three other, couples and uh, two of them were nomad couples and then they're close friends and down in the Virgin Islands so you can leverage it and rent a a 44 foot catamaran which is you know pretty amazing it's uh, almost ridiculous except that it's cheaper than an all all inclusive if you all pull the assets together and you don't mind having an active vacation (laughs) and yeah it gets a sharper and more comfortable sailing for if we ever Pull the trigger on our own sailboat. Maybe. Right. right. Maybe. <laughs> Keep up the skills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see where this is going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's, let's set up the two, the truck camper aspect. What was going on there? And, and I mean, I will give a little, I do know, I do know them. So <laughs> I do know what's going on there. I know we were even there when you bought it. So, yes. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Yeah, which was an excitement in its own. Jace disappeared for a few days <laughs> to go pick it up. But um, the main reason was because we had planned a trip um, to Baja, and that was just this spring. And so we thought we'd look. We kept an eye out for truck camper, and um, one popped up. And so we thought we'd live in it for a while before we went to Baja to kind of, you know, see how we liked it. And that ended up being four months Yeah, <laughs> last year. Oh, so wow. I didn't realize that. <laughs> yeah, Lori's a trooper because it was a our for our short bed truck. It's a Hallmark brand pop up camper and six and a half foot bed, so there's no bathroom in it. <laughs> and so she lived in it last summer for four months with no bathroom, and then for seven you know, weeks and <laughs> easy for me, not so easy for her. And then uh, yeah, for Baja, we were down in the Baja Peninsula for seven weeks, bumping mm-hmm. around and. Yeah. Just a little more flexibility. Yeah. Just a little more flexibility. Like we didn't want to bring our Airstream down there. Mm -hmm. Um, And even 
uh, traveling around the U.S., it was fun just to go to kind of off-the-grid spots because we don't need internet. We could just kind of go off anywhere. Right. Yeah, we could hit a four, four-wheel four drive trail. Um, you know, I'm getting into some boondocking spots. Yeah. We may have <laughs> bent our steps up a little bit, oh. <laughs> high centering over rocks and stuff. So I've actually put a three-inch lift kit on the Airstream for additional ground clearance to match up to the truck better. But even then, it's a, you know, we bought the Airstream used, and it's a 30-footer, which is much larger than we need. Yeah. And so, you know, the, the Airstream, a 30-foot Airstream is too big for us. <laughs> you know, two of us and one dog now. But uh, that's kind of like a great escape pod to get out and yeah. hit the road, uh, drive the million-dollar road, you know, from oh, Telluride right. to Ridgeway, stuff so like that. Oh, yeah, you did that in the, yeah, in the truck, truck camper. camper. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and John said, "Then that's a new meaning to closeness." <laughs> oh yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. It definitely was. <laughs> and yes. you had both dogs in the truck oh, camper. Yeah, too. yeah, last summer. Yeah, <laughs> last summer. It was tight. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 we've been on the million dollar highway, but we have yet to do an RV, and yeah. I, we don't really care to yeah. at this mm -hmm. point. So. Yeah, the truck camp would be a lot easier, yeah. I would assume. Yeah, actually, I said Million Dollar Highway, but uh, Last Dollar Road is the one I was thinking oh, of, where okay. it's lots of ruts and a you know a heavy traveled Jeep path. But yeah, but yeah, even uh, the Airstream's not nearly as comfortable as the truck camper mm -hmm. over the Million Dollar Road. We've done both now. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys took so you did that around the U.S. quite a bit. Mm -hmm. so you got off road mm -hmm. places and. Any anywhere there that stood out, maybe um, that you, you can know, get to that you couldn't maybe even get to in your airstream or something that you're like, oh, I'm glad we got this truck camper and went around the U.S. Boy, we bumped it's, around all over. You know, the great thing about the U.S. is the geography is different every 200 miles, right? And <laughs> I so love that. that's yeah. <laughs> I, you know, even in South Dakota, we'd spend all that time living next door in Minnesota. It's like, oh, it's just South Dakota. But, yeah. you know, it's these grasslands or prairies, and then it's the badlands, and then it's the Black Hills a little further away and all that right. fun stuff. Uh, one of the benefits was we pulled in to Nomad Overlook and... Um, yes, in the right, grasslands. Yeah, and near the grasslands. Gas, grasslands. Yeah. And it had just rained, and as you pull down through there, it's kind of like prairie, yeah. and it got so muddy, we... If we'd pulled the Airstream in, we probably would have been fine with an F-250 truck. Mm -hmm. But um, with a truck camper, it was no problem at all. And even with the truck camper on, we were able to pull out some van lifers <laughs> that were stuck there. They were going to oh, wait yeah. until the next day and hope it dried out. That, yeah. And we were able to use our snatch strap and you know get them out of the ruts really? and set up for, so they could get a good night's yeah. sleep instead of, instead of at the... an angle to where they're rolled <laughs> into a corner. And, I could see that. Um, but yeah, just the flexibility yeah. in general, you can just kind of go anywhere. You don't have to worry it's about easy. backing up a yeah. trailer and, yeah. uh, you know, those pop-up truck campers are remarkably comfortable. Uh, it, it wouldn't work for wintering over where Lori has to take a shower before going to work every day you right. know, in that situation. In that case, you'd have to have, you know, the bigger Bigfoot style with a, mm -hmm. a full bathroom. You know, even a you know, a hallmark, but a, a shower and stuff. Right, or you'd so, have to be at a park where yeah. you could get to that. Yeah, but facilities. then, yeah, yeah, maybe you don't want to be in the in the truck camper in the park. Mm -hmm. You might as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you guys have an airstream, just use it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So tell us about Baja too. While we're here, we're talking about it. Baja was good because yeah. I know there's people out there. They <laughs> always wonder about going to Mexico, and Baja is like a nice way to do it. Right. It's beautiful out there yes. it's it's not even you know, it was connected to the mainland but it's its own little peninsula mm -hmm. and you got yeah a it, different feeling there yeah um so for starters you know yes the roads are narrow um, <laughs> i'm glad we didn't bring the airstream <laughs> yeah it was much more relaxing not to be pulling yeah. a trailer because there are sections of highway one down through the the center of Baja that get very narrow. There's a few nasty potholes that we call tank <laughs> traps. Uh, there's lots of vados where they dip down. Oh, okay. And uh, just for arroyos, you know, the drainage ditches, oh, but yeah. they work that into the road. So that way it doesn't erode the road. Mm. It erodes the road <laughs> <laughs> uh, during a rainstorm. Uh, topes are the word for uh, speed bumps and they're like small ski jumps, you know. Oh. Uh, so not pulling a large <laughs> long trailer or motorhome over it. 
Oh, that was oh. convenient. Because we did hit a couple at full speed. Oh, you did. <laughs> yeah. The whole camper shifted to the side. Oh my yes. gosh. So <laughs> that was... we weren't we weren't bulletproof. Um, but otherwise, the people are very friendly. The, um, you know, we went to both the Pacific side and the Sea of Cortez, and okay. um, yeah, kind of yeah. staggered <laughs> our way all the way down. Uh, we love. Mexican food, you know, so fish tacos, shrimp tacos were usually 25 pesos, $1.25 maybe. Right. Um, Pacifico beers and the different kinds of beer were generally a dollar and bottled water was more <laughs> in oh, most wow. places. Um, <laughs> you know, the tortilla factories everywhere. Uh, the yeah. culture was just lots of fun. Um, you know, lots of stuff to see. We, we did uh, all the way out to the Pacific side, you know, to a surf village and uh, we actually had to use the max tracks because we I was being <laughs> oh. not so smart and got into some dunes, but, but we, I but used some max yes. tracks before we were buried because there was no one coming to help. No. Um, but yeah, we just had a great time. We stopped into Cabo for like two nights and parked the truck camper in the driveway of a bed and breakfast for a reduced rate. And, um, you know, we didn't go there for Cabo. That's just not our style. Um, matter of fact, for food safety, the only time <laughs> we got any stomach problems yeah. was Lori in Cabo, you know, like the most right, the Western place yeah. that you would yeah. go. So, yeah, otherwise it was great swimming, paddleboarding. I got a paddleboard like the day before we left. Inflatable to yeah, save some room. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, the, you know, uh, there's footage drone footage of Lori and a friend on the paddle board with a whale shark yes. going right underneath in the Sea of Cortez, <laughs> Bay of amazing. Conception. And that's, that's on Ma the Wanderwasi or Wanderwasi underscore him okay, uh, Instagram right. accounts. Yeah, Instagram. Not that you need to go there and look <laughs> no, at it. No, but I was going to say that, that you guys should go look at that because it's amazing to see you on the paddle board and there's a whale shark <laughs> yeah, right like next to you. 18 feet long yeah, underneath and just touch. Right. <laughs> This huge thing. Yeah. It's, it's, it was just mind blowing when I yeah. saw it. I was like, oh my gosh, where are you guys? I gotta go there. This yeah. is an amazing picture. And it's cool you had a drone too to get it from above so we could see it. Yeah. yeah. So that was very cool. It's definitely on the list to go back to. You know, yeah. we didn't have any bad experiences with police, with military checkpoints. There's none of that. You know, obviously we weren't doing dumb things like speeding excessively, <laughs> uh, drinking and driving, you know, just it's their it country. Nice. It's a different country. So honor their way of doing right. things. And then there were no issues. So hey, perfect. Yeah. Don't let the news scare you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And Baja is I, an easy way to kind of mm -hmm. ease into Mexico, too, yeah. Yeah. I would think. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good way to go. <laughs> I got my little notes here. I'm going <laughs> to drop them. <laughs> So this is, uh, we have some questions that we've had from different students and things like that. And one of the things they want to know is what's the best thing about being on the road for you guys? Oh, I think, well, for me, it's just like, well, for one, it's meeting friends. Like yeah. we didn't expect that at all, but it really is like right. constantly meeting up with friends and um, just seeing things like I lived in that we both Far from the Midwest and you know the West is like something like until I was in my 30s I hadn't been out here and it's just totally different and yeah I love it so just seeing all the different you know the whole country mm -hmm. yeah I'd say about the same it's we'd always traveled internationally so I've been to over 50 countries you know yeah and we hadn't explored States, yeah. yeah and state-wise I think we're at maybe mid 30s Okay. Oh, so no, I, I think go. we're probably only about 20. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, in our travels. <laughs> yes. Yeah, me yeah. And oh, general. in the RV travels. Yeah, in yeah. the RV travels for sure, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, many. there's just so much to see, but yeah. definitely the friends. It was kind of funny because in our old house before we sold it and hit the road, it was so comfortable. It was too comfortable. Right. And it was this little cocoon, maybe is a good <laughs> word for it, where we just didn't go out. We had great friends that we would talk to occasionally and then you know like oh we could go out we should go out but no yeah, yeah oh you know you i broke a nail <laughs> just like these random excuses now that we're on the road it's just part of our you know our whole group of friends is right. oh where are they at okay oh that's right. too far away but maybe we can meet them next month and mm -hmm. yeah. we're always doing you know a potluck or meeting up for a hike uh, even if it's only a few nights you know right right so definitely <laughs> friendships are so Probably much better those, yeah. and you know more genuine uh also mm -hmm. with friends 
we've met a lot of people that we would never talk to living in a house because they are, they don't seem like they would be part of our demographic or a normal group. You, right. you wouldn't assume that you have anything in common, but you're full timers and you just naturally have a lot of stuff to talk about and you, it kind of opens up, um, you know, just the way you see, see the world through all these different perspectives of friends. I totally agree <laughs> with all of that. <laughs> I, I definitely agree with the friend thing. I always say we're more social now mm -hmm. than we ever were yep. living in one place. I and mean, we had, we moved around. So we have friends that are, are in different places and we keep in touch, mm -hmm. but not as much as we keep in touch with all of our nomadic friends yep. like you guys. I mean, <laughs> We're meeting up here and you know, this was unexpected, but yep. <laughs> it, was, it was great. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's like, and we told our other friends that you guys are going to be here. So they went <laughs> close by and you guys yeah. were just there last night. Yeah. It's just like, okay, well, yeah, everybody's within a hundred miles. Yeah. We'll go over yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> it's totally worth it. And yeah. yeah, I feel like we, we are a lot more connected with yeah. people and yeah. Oh, range of people that so most of the time it was always people we worked with yeah. or things like yeah. that yeah. you know and maybe friends from high school or college or mm -hmm. something but it's not like i was meeting people outside of work mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. otherwise yeah. i know very yeah very true yeah <laughs> it's not like i work with any of you guys so <laughs> it's kind of fun and yeah. we can all go out and talk about different things and we're not all talking about work yeah. which is <laughs> different too yeah and kind of nice yes. you know it's i think it's a little less stressful mm -hmm. too and and yeah about um seeing different parts of the country too mm -hmm. oh, yeah the west is so different than the east coast yes. and the midwest mm -hmm. it's amazing <laughs> that you can get all that different geography you're talking about like 200 miles within that it changes and if like even just in colorado if you look at like you've got mountains and then you've got plains in the east. Yeah, and, front range, oh, back yeah, range. front range, back <laughs> range, and then there's and, yeah, the high uh, Rockies and deserty <laughs> areas, and it's like this is all one state. This yes. is yeah. crazy. Indiana's not like that where I grew <laughs> up. So <laughs> you just don't have that. <laughs> so I, I yeah, I agree with you on both points. It's just really kind of amazing. And the the friend thing I did not expect either. No. no. At all. Yeah. So that's huge benefit. Yes. Huge <laughs> benefit. And once you get into it and you gain those friends in the community, I think it makes you feel more a part of it mm -hmm. and even better about like traveling. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it keeps you out there for us. Um, our first year or two is about the places we went. Mm -hmm. And then as we've gotten into it and made more friends, it's become more about where are we going to see our friends? <laughs> And not always necessarily where are we going to go see something? Because like last week we we're in Quartzsite. And I mean, yeah, there's, it's a big hub for RVers, but that's why we're there to go see our RVers. Not because Quartzsite is so awesome <laughs> no. that we wanted to be there and go look at things. We've been there before. It's, it's fine. It's not exciting. <laughs> um, it's like a British it's fun. It's fine it's in fine. the British sense. Right. <laughs> we were there purely because our friends were there. Yes. So, but that was what made it awesome. Mm -hmm. So it's again, what you make of it, right? Absolutely. We had a great time and we're going back for escapers next week because of more RVers there. <laughs> I mean, it's not like, oh yes, I want to eat at Silly Owls every day. <laughs> it's <laughs> the most perfect place, <laughs> but it's what you make of it. Yep. Yes. Oh, so, okay. That's the best things, but what's the hardest part about being on the road or being full time? We were trying to think of this, and I know people have their list of the 10 worst things about Irene. And like when people post it, I'm like, I just don't think it's that bad. <laughs> it's I, I, can, that I can understand. <laughs> I'm right there with you. We couldn't think of <laughs> it's. I mean, you should be so lucky that you can hit the that you can own an RV mm -hmm. and that you can vacation for even a week a year, let alone be full time, right? So, right it's, we kind of look at it as, well, poor us. These are absolutely, you know, first world problems. Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, there's some, some days, um, we stay away from big metro areas. So driving with a trailer, oh, you know, yeah, that's some places we've had really nasty traffic or just, you mm -hmm. know, the random trucker that was 
being a, a butt. Um, <laughs> you know, we had that out in like Bakersfield or Barstow, I think one day and it was, you know, it was one person, but it was yeah. stressful as heck. Right. And it was like, okay, we need to be done with this. <laughs> yeah. But um, I think we set ourselves up pretty good to avoid problems. We learned some good lessons sailing in that you never pull into a spot after dark because mm -hmm. you're going to, get in a fight, <laughs> cause damage to something or both. Right. Right. And then part of that uh, also is like 200 miles a day is what we set for our limit to travel. Yeah. And so that gives you time to thing. get up without, Oh gosh. Okay. Hurry up. Let's go. I'm still tired, but we've got to go. I don't have time for enough coffee to, you know, my normal routine. Right. And you know, if there, if it starts raining for a while, you can't wait it out. Right. But uh, 200 miles gives you enough time to get up. Mm -hmm. uh, travel for a couple of hours, you know, stop for lunch if you'd like, stop to mm -hmm. see some random, you know, the world's <laughs> giant, the world's largest fiberglass ant on the side of the road, you know. One Did of those... you really see that? No. no. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, where is that? Pistachio. <laughs> the world's largest fiberglass pistachio near Cloudcroft, New Mexico is oh, okay. actually, yeah. that, that is a true story. <laughs> but uh, 200 miles a day, you don't have to kill yourself you, getting up early, driving like a fool. Um, you know, if there's traffic, uh, whatever, it just allows you to kind of, you know, we just made it part of the routine before we left. Mm -hmm. And that's been really helpful. Um, you know, yeah. in the truck camper, like going from Colorado back to see family in Minnesota, we probably did that in two days. And that was a lot of driving, which was pretty <laughs> awful. But, you know, that was stuff we'd seen so many times right. before bomb through and you didn't so, have to tow either no. and so that makes and a huge difference yeah yeah, yes. yeah. Um, <laughs> difference. Right. i mean it's still you you're used to your airstream mm -hmm. but yeah just not having to tow does make it a little yeah. less stressful yes. yeah. and even after three years we still follow those rules pretty i mean we've mm -hmm. never driven the airstream at night i can't think of one time that we have mm -hmm. and no, so we just, just we've <laughs> i mean so i'm sure we've avoided problems by you know doing yeah. that and so, yeah, yeah, no, no, it's no need a to. very good way. It's a the two, two, two kind yeah. of rule. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and it does. It allows you. It frees you up to relax a little bit mm -hmm. and and not stress out. You don't have to keep going. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, definitely. And, you know, I mean, I'm with you on that. I was, today is actually our nomad anniversary. Oh, it is. So you're yeah. Four years. Ago? Four years yeah. today. Congratulations. <laughs> so, yeah. I, and so I got a, like a little um, memory on Facebook uh -huh. about it and I was thinking about it. And last year I wrote a post when we were starting the group and everything about our three years on the road. And so I was trying to be reflective and it was like, these are the best things that have happened and some of the things that we love about RVing. And it's like, well, I have to put the cons, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> nothing is ever that bad anymore. Even when yeah. we've had things happen, it's like, yeah, it happened, but whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's a story to tell. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. something, oh, okay. <laughs> it's like things just never seem that bad because, Hey, I'm not like sitting in an office cubicle mm -hmm. and <laughs> yeah, we, the water heater, you know, like a factory well done, it went bad. And so I had to replace the water heater out at a boondocking spot in Sedona. Sedona yeah. You know? Oh, so, that's a bad place yeah. to me. <laughs> well, <laughs> to do some work, well, though, work you know, that, work. Yeah. so I've got like this orange, sandy <laughs> yeah. mud all over me and you know, yeah, the, wet the hole too. through the inside and outside of the Airstream trying to wedge it back in there. <laughs> and it's, you know. It's like, well, it's still better than the best day in an office. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like, okay, maybe the dust in Sedona out there, Boondock, is not the best place to change a water heater as you get muddy. But it is Sedona. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you've still got that beautiful view. Yeah. Yes. And all of that. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So. It's not terrible. <laughs> all right. Because even um, a couple of years ago, we were all out at Kofa together. Mm -hmm. Your quartzite. I'm talking about quartzite again, but we tried to do some work and we kind we actually did get stuck because it wasn't a water heater. We were taking something off of our RV um, to add anti sway bars, mm -hmm. and we didn't have to run around like we had to drive up to Lake Havasu to get bolts mm -hmm. and all this strange stuff. But we were in the desert with friends, yeah, and we were having a good time, and we were able to go get those bolts and put it back together enough to get somewhere to have them say okay just fix it because <laughs> this we tried to do it but there were parts missing and we couldn't mm -hmm. but so we were stuck in the desert for a while literally stuck like we could not <laughs> move our rv but 
you know what? Yeah. We fixed it. It's funny now. Yeah. Um, it made a good post. It was pretty funny. And we were with all you guys. So whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I that. We have more questions. Oh, so you want to know what Jace does for work? <laughs> uh, Jace has been a bum the last couple of years. Well, you are retired military. So he does have a small pension from that. And also the big part of that is we uh, have health insurance, yes. which makes a huge difference in, you know, stress. That's why I don't have to work all year either. So, cause we can keep that health insurance all year, mm -hmm. but he is working this year. We traded this year. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, I'm... back in Minnesota, I'm helping family with some health issues and Jace is working. So <laughs> yeah, I, I get job ADD is what yeah. we joke about. So I've been an airport manager, uh, you know, project manager, construction projects, airports. Uh, right now I'm working as a pipe fitter, you know, just like mm -hmm. go back to blue collar. It's just nice to turn wrenches, you know, read some prints, do some technical stuff. But project management is a lot of babysitting adults that you would think know better, but that's why there's project manager <laughs> right. jobs, right? <laughs> so, um, I need to look for my, one of my goals in, I guess, 2018 is to find something that I definitely want to do where I can help people, but also work remotely. Mm -hmm. And I would rather take a reduced rate and work year round, um, you know, sort out the hours, but I'm not going to kill myself right. on hours and uh, find something I can do remotely. Okay. So be and, one uh, of us. Yeah. yeah. One of the rest of us. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. We'll see how that goes. Because <laughs> you know. I really do like our flexibility right now, but yeah. it'd be nice to... No. Yeah. No. Over the last couple of years, you know, um, I guess I haven't done a whole lot. You know, I did a, a pretty massive solar panel battery inverter upgrade on the Airstream. Uh, we volunteered at the um, Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta, which is pretty awesome. Right. Definitely go back for that again. And then the Overland Expo uh, out west is a great mm -hmm. team. I love hanging out with those guys and, you know, do a little work for them. So volunteering, that, that sort of stuff. Okay. Well, cool. So, yeah, because you're not going to be a pipe fitter all along the oh, road and or uh, project management. Could you do that remotely? Uh, not as a construction not project like construction, manager. Yeah. Um, different IT type project management jobs, I think, lend themselves mm -hmm. to it. Um, or just being in a company as a PM when you decide yeah. to launch and negotiating mm -hmm. something out where uh, I'll fly back for critical phases of projects, but otherwise I'll be on online. <laughs> All right. Know, so you can reach me on Slack or Google Hangouts. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Give Chase a job. <laughs> <laughs> That's our goal for 2018 is before we um, get back on the road to do remote. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, and so you said you're you know helping with family and mm -hmm. stuff and, I think something that's great about this lifestyle too is the flexibility that yes. you are able to go back and yeah. do that. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we had expected to be in Yuma this year, but things came up at the last minute. We went back to Minnesota. We're staying in a house, put the Airstream in storage and, and we can do that. So, yeah. And it's cut so much stress out of everything. All right. Like it's, it is sad to not be in the Airstream. <laughs> yeah. You know, to not be in our little. You're in your home. You're not in your home. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So that's, but yeah. again, you know, it's, I mean, we're like able to totally completely change and, and work 3,000 to 3,000 miles away, you know, within a month's notice to mm -hmm. help out family is, yeah. yeah, is awesome. So, yeah, it's very good. <laughs> we um, did something similar, but we didn't. <clears throat> well, actually, we did do something similar last year. Mm -hmm. It wasn't for the same reasons. We did it before we left and we kind of moved our, that's why our new anniversary is. <laughs> now and <laughs> not <laughs> earlier because we decided to postpone mm -hmm. and be able to help out. And last year we even just went back and helped my mom move. So we had that flexibility and thankfully we're on the East coast too last year. So it wasn't a, like we got to get Cross back country. on the West coast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we were able to go help her and yeah. I, that's a nice thing. Yeah. You know, being able to do that. So yeah. I'm glad that you guys were able to yeah. do that too. Yeah. Cause it's, it's wonderful it's that you can. Yeah. yeah. So um, we do have another question here about, we know more about your solar. So you said you upgraded the solar. Yes. Uh, so the Airstream we bought used, it was a 2012 30 footer. So a decent amount of space, but you know, it's a curved roof. So there's some limitations. Uh, we did four 135 watt panels. So 540 mm -hmm. watts total to a combiner box on the roof down through the fridge vent 
<laughs> Sorry. That was, no, that was, that was actually a question from Brandon, actually, I guess, <laughs> yeah. is what he just told me. So, <laughs> I, I, you know, full time, the full timers checklist. Do you yeah. have a composting toilet check? Do you have mm -hmm. solar? Okay. How many watts? How many amp hours? Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. So I've got like a blue sky controller. Uh, I did all the install myself. Um, AM solar. I bought everything through. We helps, upgraded but... to four lithium, uh, not lithium, but AGM batteries. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the Airstream has battery box for two. So I pulled them out okay. of there and I put four inside <laughs> our underneath our couch. Okay. And uh, the AGMs don't vent, so it's safe to have them inside. Mm -hmm. So I did that. And then we bought a, a really, <laughs> really nice, way over what we needed inverter, a Magnum 3, Pure Sign 3000 oh. watt inverter. And our, Is it the hybrid? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. So, our thought, uh, here's a good thing for anyone that's getting ready to go out on the road is don't over buy stuff, get out there and travel for a while, make do with a ground deploy solar panel, right. Which we did at see first. what you really need before you buy an $1,800 inverter. <laughs> um, Twenty seven hundred. <laughs> no, it was. 18. Yeah, it was. No, it was. It was yeah. expensive, but we'll, we'll disagree. Expensive. <laughs> um, it was expensive. expensive. Our thought sure. was we. So here's another thing. Before we launched buying shiny objects, right? Uh, we bought a brand new Honda two thousand watt generator. You oh, know the right, nice, right. quiet, small size. The kind of the cream of the crop. Right. You know that one or two of the top ones, and uh, that would run most everything. Uh, we ended up selling it at two and a half years in because we still hadn't put 20 hours on for the first oil change and we just never needed it. Oh wow. But um, the original thought was the generator's running, it's too hot for the dogs to go on a hike or a national park, they can't hike. Mm -hmm. So we would leave that running and then the hybrid inverter when the AC kicked on would trip out the 2000 right. watt generator. But with the hybrid inverter, it would pull out of the batteries, get through the mm -hmm. starting load and then the generator would go back to taking care of everything okay. and we, and we never you know we no. we never even tried it because yeah. we got to thinking about it was like well you know it's really dry out here in the desert when we could try it and it's kind of fire season and that's pretty uh, irresponsible right to leave right. a generator running unsupervised that and you know what's going to burn down <laughs> potentially your house <laughs> right next to the running generator so don't overbuy stuff before you hit the road yeah yeah, and yeah. you know, search search online for advice. Lori did a bunch yeah. of that. Okay, we need this. <laughs> right. We, need we don't need that. We think we need that, but we really, we really don't. don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I agree with that. I mean, especially if you if you haven't done any of this before, you don't know if you like boondocking. Mm -hmm. Go yeah, out and absolutely. try it first. You know, you can if you have a generator, you can use that. Like a motorhome, oftentimes can come with one. Mm -hmm. So we started out that way before we bought into solar mm -hmm. to okay. make sure that we wanted it. And you mentioned the ground deploy solar panels mm -hmm. and that's a good way to get into it. Yep. Get a little yeah. bit. And we do. Do you guys have that still? Do you uh, use that too? We sold one and we bought another one. Oh, so, okay. yeah. uh, but we did use it for our first four or five months. We used mm -hmm. just the ground deploy to our two, you know, regular batteries. Yeah. yeah, and that and, that worked really well. Yeah. You know, all the lights were LEDs. That's something mm -hmm. I would recommend. Yeah, anyone that buys an older RV go Switch through immediately up. all LEDs. <laughs> but uh, yeah, to charge up two laptops, two phones, <laughs> yeah. listen to the you know the the Literally. stereo system. Yeah, <laughs> that was plenty. But, yeah, but um, to start out with, yeah. we knew that we were going to after working in Key West the first winter get back out west and start spending more and more time. So I think our record right now is like 25 days. I don't know. I mean, it's roughly not, without hookups yeah. and we didn't need to stop for electrical hookups. It was just a, it was, we need to dump, to we need to do a laundry, <laughs> right. we need to clean the dust from the desert out. <laughs> right. And so we pull in and we spend one night in an RV park, yeah. we, you know, hit our Costco, our Target, all these errands that you run REI. You yeah. run back and, you know, <laughs> clean up. So otherwise we could go and definitely not with solar. Mm -hmm. And we knew that's where we wanted to go. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. Well, I have a, a question from the group for you since you guys um, camp a lot in national parks mm -hmm. and we're talking about solar and generators. Do they have generator hours at the national parks? Most of them, yeah. Yes. And they have, and they're all different too. So you just have yeah. to check with the park that you're going to. Okay. And let's see. So we do have some of the other questions that come up a lot. If you ha had any reservations before heading out and if so, did they play out? And so we talked about that before 
uh, stopping by and we couldn't think of anything. I guess one that did come up was like family medical issues. Mm -hmm. You know, that was like a huge detractor for uh, sailing, you know, eventually get good enough at sailing right. and save up enough money to head west and circumnavigate would be awesome. But then, you know, if you're near Australia, finding a berth for the boat and flying back, you know, you yeah. just can't be that flexible. And, you know, this just all proved itself out with yeah. the Right. That was yeah, like, oh like... boy, our parents, you know, they're not <laughs> old by any means. They're right. in the mid sixties, but you know, things happen. Yep. Family members get ill. And uh, so okay. that was a slight reservation yeah. that we'd forgotten about. And it just, yeah, it just, yeah, no, just... And, but otherwise we were really excited to go. <laughs> 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 yes. And we didn't want to stay another winter. So <laughs> we left in August and yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So I was going to ask, too, if there's anything in the choices that you made, if you do differently, and and specifically, we did have a question because we have someone now that's looking at. They're trying to sign on Airstream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They already got the F two fifty. Oh, okay, um, good. Because, yeah, <laughs> we we talked about that because it was funny. It came up yesterday, and you guys had all made the comment. Well, you guys are on, are out there, but everybody who's parked near Joshua Tree mm -hmm. right now, it's the F two fifty commercial. Yes. So they have that, but they're looking at Airstream and they're wondering if you would still choose an Airstream and if there's any features that you would change. But then also just in general, if there's anything on your path to full timing that you might have changed. Um, as far as the Airstream, I think, well, the 30 foot is too big. Yes. <laughs> we would change to a smaller one if, if it were, you know, cost effective for us right now. Of course, I have my eye out since it's in storage mm -hmm. for the winter, but... Um, I would buy an Airstream again just because I like towing something and then having the truck um, available for, like, back road trails for, to get to hikes, really. We don't do any jeeping or whatever, branding <laughs> X-Terra. <-ing. laughs> <laughs> Nothing like that, but just to, you know, instead of having a car, having the truck to get around. Yeah. yeah to get through a wash or some random mm -hmm. place to camp where there's no one around is yeah, always right. awesome. And I like being able to um not having to pull the whole rig in for like propane because it's stress that's stressful to me is to pull in to get gas and we usually don't have to because of our 200 mile rule um so i like not having to worry about filling propane and um, gas with a big rig okay and the airstream yeah. i like the quality so as far as a trailer yeah like so it. maintenance wise on the airstream the upper inside <laughs> radius sorry we lose <laughs> a a rivet of about every thousand miles it's just mm -hmm. the curvature right it just and that's a uh, two-minute fix it takes me longer to get the <laughs> tools out and to then it does to actually do that repair um, the water heater was a factory weld that mm -hmm. wasn't Airstream related they bought it from you know bought it right ready to go. it's always the um, suppliers for you know we I think all RVs need the foam upgraded. If you're going to sit on them and have like a home yeah. office, the, the foam is comfortable for about 20 minutes. <laughs> for weekenders, <laughs> yes. yes. Not for us. Yeah. Yes. So we um, upgraded that. I would definitely buy one again. You know, it's an RV takes a beating. Um, mm -hmm. But to, if we had our choice of anything, I would lean more towards instead of a 30 foot Airstream and mm -hmm. a truck with a tonneau cover. I, as much as I don't like toppers for the reduced visibility, I would get a 23 maybe a 25 foot airstream with a topper if you had to bring extra stuff and store it okay because yeah because the back of the truck downsize. kind of becomes your garage mm -hmm. and so yeah yeah you would have a little bit more room in there if you had a topper on it yep yeah just you know the thing just to do is to things. downsize more yeah maybe leave some <laughs> right. stuff in a family's member's garage and don't carry it if you really need it plan a loop you know maybe <laughs> this year is like a three-week loop or yeah. it's, you know, like a three month loop, but you're going to fly back. You can pick up the essentials. Right. It's uh, go lighter. <laughs> you just so much of that stuff you just yeah. don't need. <laughs> so you're, you really, if you did it like 23, 25 foot. Airstream. Yeah. 25, yeah. 25, 25 foot. Yeah. And that question came from David. He's actually in our student group because he is taking the road map to full time RV okay. course. And we were Good. talking to him yesterday <laughs> about some of this. So thank yeah. you for that. And, we might have to bring you in there and talk about <laughs> airstreams later on. We can do that. <laughs> and, yeah. and you guys did carry a motorcycle for a bit, too, for scouting. Yes. Um, 
I bought Lori a Honda Trail 70. <laughs> that was the first bike I'd learned to ride on. And, you know, so I near and dear to my heart. But we got her one, and uh, I ended up riding it more, <laughs> doing silly things like riding wheelies like in the that. desert. And, yeah. I don't need to be doing that. But, it's, yeah, we, we sold that at the Overland Expo. And <laughs> oh, is that where you yeah. sold it? Yeah. I didn't realize that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, that was actually. place to sell it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it went quick. That was easy to carry because. Uh, it was four bolts to put a front receiver hitch on mm -hmm. the front of the F-250. And, you know, when we started, we did have an F-150 with a max tow package, which could pull, but the payload just oh, did not work. And then we added a bunch of additional weight with two extra batteries, you know, at 60 pounds each, roughly. The inverter was about 60 pounds, and it's all up at the front. So we definitely had to upgrade when we finally yeah. put it on the scales on this is okay, but and so <laughs> a smaller a 23 or 25, you could easily do an uh, F-150 or a half ton truck with a good payload. Yeah. You know, capacity. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So do you guys have any tips for relationships? I mean, you're living in a small <laughs> space. I mean, you even did a truck camper. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> You got it. You got to have a good relationship or you've got yes. some kind of trick to making it work. Uh, in there. I feel like now, not that we ever fought a lot, but like if we like have disagreements, like we kind of just take our separate time <laughs> and our, and then we come back together and that's fine. Cause I mean, you do not want to live with someone in a, in a small space <laughs> when you're angry at each other. There's... So I think we get over things quicker. Like maybe we have more tolerant, personal tolerance for each other about real stupid stuff and we just get over it easier now then <laughs> yeah get over it and you know we communicate a whole lot better than we used to um you know that and just like communicating before it becomes an issue like okay yeah. so i can hear you smacking your lips when you eat that from the bedroom which is you know it's only 15 feet away so of course right. you can hear it but you know you're just having one of those days where something's under your skin and you've got like that misdirected anger like oh i hate that sound i heard <laughs> So you learn to like, um, could you not chomp your gum? Or, you know, she'll tell yeah. me or something <laughs> random. <laughs> so communicate better and yeah. get, get over, over it. it. <laughs> yeah. um, as close as we are, you know, just go out and do your own thing for a while. Like, whatever, I'm out of here. I'm you know, yeah. going to go out and do a, a quick hike myself. Or... Right. But really, it's rare that we do stuff apart from each other. Like now that he... When we're during work season, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I haven't seen you all day. Yeah, <laughs> you're actually going to work. It's like totally different than the rest of your year. Yes. Where you're together all the time. All Literally the time. 24 yeah. hours a day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure it does seem a lot like, yes. oh, I haven't seen you forever. Yeah, we laugh at ourselves about that. Yeah. Like, we're such dorks. Yeah, we are pretty dorky. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. I think it's sweet. Don't you guys? I think it's sweet. Give them some hearts or something. Press the screen here. <laughs> I think it's sweet. Um, so do you guys have a piece of advice that you would tell to someone who's looking to start full-timing? Mm -hmm. um, I think just like, uh, don't rush into it. Like, I know a lot of people are excited to go, but... You know, we looked at everything and thought, of, you know, we had our plans and we did buy a few things, you know, that we didn't really need, but just. Um, we started a couple of years early downsizing. That was the mm -hmm. hardest part to launch was getting yeah. rid of things. And uh, so our mantra for a couple of years before this was, oh, look at that new TV at Costco. <laughs> we would balance each other out with, no, it won't fit on the boat. And, you know, the right. boat ended up being an right. airstream instead of a sailboat, but the mantra Same it, concept. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, your like, furniture's built in here. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's not like you're going to yes. put in your own TV yeah. unless you really need to replace it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, look for things that have two uses. Cause that's like, yeah. you know, it's a full timer is geeking out. I like, woohoo, you know, yeah. I can do two things with that. Um, downsizing early and yeah. you know, like for me, the hardest thing to downsize <laughs> were our kayaks being in oh. like, why am I so attached to these two plastic <laughs> kayaks? And, you know, I think maybe, maybe the American culture just, we attach all the meaning of those memories to a physical thing, but you right. still have the memories. And I kind of, that was like a breakthrough for me. Like, Oh, it's just a thing. I still have the memories, right? You know, even photographs. It's like, well, mm -hmm. do you really need like the old photographs that we had thousands of like, 
you know, we've got those memories. We still saved a bunch of those, yeah. but. But yeah, just but, uh, like the whole process of downsizing, just, you know, we took our time and went through mm -hmm. all those memory kind of things. And I would just sit there and look at everything and then throw you, it away. Yeah, you burned some <laughs> stuff oh, yeah, in the fire some. pit outside yeah. that was oh, like yeah. really meaningful yeah. and just like, okay, kind yes. of like. It was a mindset for a couple, a yeah. couple years, so. I think it really is. It helps. It helps to start as early mm -hmm. as possible. Yeah. Because that is when it, I think that is probably the biggest hurdle for most people. Yeah. yeah. And it was, I mean, it, even though we had that mindset, it was still hard to get mm -hmm. rid of those last final things that we had to go through. Yeah. Right? It, the house, we'd only ever owned the house that we ended up selling. Oh, yeah. we, we were so yes. attached to it that we couldn't rent it out because it was just like, well, yeah. I don't want to be in the middle of the woods and a water line breaks, which... You know, I did all the plumbing, so I knew it wouldn't, but right. I don't want to deal with that. And so even more so as someone like destroys the hardwood floors that we just had right. refinished a year and a half before. So, so yeah. Good. yeah, we just didn't want that anxiety, <laughs> yeah. so we got rid of that house. So, um, <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. So, in retrospect, if we, you know, it would have been nice to have an, uh, a cash flowing in, property income, but, but mm -hmm. yeah, it was it worth you worrying over it? Yeah, compared to no. not at the that. beginning, I don't know. Yeah. Really, so. And now you're doing something where you are yes. going yeah. to have rental income. Yep. Yeah. So we went back this winter and the house we're in, we purchased and we're not forming any attachments and it will be our, our rental. It's so yeah, yeah. The rental market we, we thought we were just going to rent is definitely not in favor of renters, you know, the supply and demand. And so it just made sense yeah. to buy a house, which is <laughs> <was like, laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, a little everybody. painful, but it's we, not for we, everybody, we but it's yeah, our rental course. and yeah. we're renting and from ourselves right now. <laughs> exactly. And when it's convenient, we'll rent it to yeah. other folks. And yeah, you know, so. so it's not your home. It's right. just where you're living right now. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> so Brandon, do we have any questions that we need to answer the over here? Solar on the generator. Solar on the generator. Yeah. Can you please talk? <laughs> <laughs> Can you run your air conditioner off of your solar when you're boondocking? No. No. We've... It would suck the batteries down and um, the starting yeah. mode would, would it, it be we've, too much? We've never tried it. In theory, the starting load would be below the uh, 3,000 watts of the Magnum Hybrid Inverter. But the batteries we have... 440 amp hours at 12 volts and so the I'm not sure what the draw would be from the air conditioner but I think it would be pretty horrible yeah. and you might get an hour or two out of it before your 440 amp hours was done and then uh, you would and, need to somehow recharge those yeah. batteries yes. with the before you yeah. could you yeah and of that like... 440 you don't want to go below half for the AGM so then you're only at 220 amp hours mm -hmm. it's drawing you know, I have no probably idea. 40 or 50. I have no idea, but yeah, do you remember? It's like it, it draws about 15 amps when it's running of 120, so that's about a 150 at 12 volt plus 15 percent for the inefficiencies. Yeah, the so you could run an hour, <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah. so no. Maybe an hour and a half. In theory, yes, we can, and in practice, <laughs> no, we never exactly. Never will. <laughs> it's like in theory, it's possible, in practicality, no, no. Uh, wow. You know, that's a good segue kind of back to one of the reasons we chose the Airstream was all of the windows mm -hmm. and you can cross flow, you mm -hmm. know, open up the back mm -hmm. window, have the front fantastic fan on or vice versa, side flow and uh, put out the awning a little ways, mm -hmm. not a fully deployed awning, but half deploy and you get that shade. And um, uh, one of the simplest upgrades I did is I took out, I don't, can you guys see? Uh, so there's a reading lamp above the bed in the Airstream, and I took that out. I got a, it's an Italian, like, Caframo, maybe, brand of ceiling uh, fan. You can get 12 volt, and it can come with or without an LED. It was maybe $80, but I put that in place of this, and that helps to push air through, and it's oh, extremely geez. efficient, okay. maybe uh, two or three amp hours of draw at high speed. Yeah. So... Uh, but with all the windows, you know, if you get too much stuff on the walls and no windows, then you can't really get the airflow going. So right. we, we haven't needed the AC very mm -hmm. often. I mean, and heat doesn't, dry heat really doesn't bother me. And we usually travel with the weather. So there might be an odd day here and there where it's a little hot. And then we just hang out with the dog. And Yeah. And, 
you just, you know, another <laughs> huge benefit of being a full-time nomad is follow the weather. So <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Why put yourself in the position of running, you know, things yeah. happen. It's a very odd day that we're too hot. Yeah. yeah. It, so, it's happened, but yeah. it's just like, well. Yeah, you, you follow it and sometimes it does. Yeah. yeah. It goes up and down, yeah. but for the most part, yeah. very yeah, small that's price why to we're pay. traveling. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Very small price to pay. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure. Well, no, you guys are in Yuma in the winter, so yeah. I, it's and not have, even that hot then. No. But yeah. And then we do have any hookups so you can run <laughs> yeah, your that's AC. That's our hookup time. <laughs> mm -hmm. If we need it. Well, all right. I think we're, Brandon, do you have anything else? All right. Well, <laughs> unless you guys have anything yeah. else here, I guess we're going to say good night. But thank you guys for joining us on RV to Freedom Live. We'll be back next Monday. And we're actually talking to Melanie and Travis of, well, I've said their names kind of backwards, but so it would be the VP of the president of Escapees and Escapers. And we'll be coming live from the Escapers Convergence in Quartzsite. So uh, we wanted to thank Lori and Jace this week. Thanks, guys, for joining us here. I know it's always yeah. happy to help. Yeah, yeah. Get, oh, get more people on the road. That's right, because we love it out here. And when we talk about the friendships, I mean, these guys we randomly met. You know, when well, it was before in Durango. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Durango. And then we went and met them in Yuma for Thanksgiving. We're like, yeah. okay, well, we'll come down and do that. Balloon so, Fiesta, Thanksgiving. Yes, yeah, the Balloon yeah. Fiesta and then Thanksgiving. And so, Thanks. yeah, and we've met up with them all over. <laughs> yeah. And Hills, talk about that kind of strange, like, oh, we're going to meet up. They were coming from one side of the country and we're trying to go to the other. And we're like, let's meet in South Dakota. <laughs> so, during Sturgis. Yeah, the yeah. Only yeah was during Sturgis. Sturgis. <laughs> so it happens. You can make some great friendships yeah. on the road. Yes. And they are proof of this. <laughs> so... <laughs> Thank you guys again. Right. We'll talk to you <laughs> later. See you next Monday. Bye. Oh, wait, did you have one? <laughs> oh, thanks for the info. There are a lot of oh. things for the info. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> thanks for the questions. <laughs> thanks, you guys, for the info. Appreciate no it. Bye-bye. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this replay of our Facebook live show. Join our Facebook community to participate in the live shows and learn how to live in an RV. Go to rvtofreedomgroup.com to join the RV to Freedom Facebook group. And to be notified about our next live videos and more, sign up with the link provided below in the video description. We want to help you find your RV to Freedom.